right now, people need to know there are 700 kids in the foster care system in Santa Barbara alone. And right now we're serving, um, CASA is serving 139 of those children, but right now, today, we have 109 on the wait list just waiting for an advocate. CASA serves children that are zero to 18, all nationalities, all genders. And there are 43 CASAs in the state of California, but there are 900 CASAs across the nation because child welfare issues are a huge, huge problem for the United States. Every day, 850 kids are admitted into the foster care system. So that means by the end of the week, there are over 4,000 kids who find themselves in foster care. And this is overburdening our court system. So that's where a CASA comes in. We got to see 4,000 of those cardboard cutouts that you're going to see at the Washington Monument. And I had the experience of marching one of those kids onto Capitol Hill to meet with Nancy Pelosi's aide and also with Senator Feinstein's aide. And it was so powerful that I was thinking, how can we bring that to Santa Barbara? And we were lucky enough, we we're the first Costa in the Western United States to get the cardboard cutouts here. I pulled in Su Supervisor Salud Carbajal and Bill Cerrone to help me on this, and I said, look, this is what I want to do. And then Supervisor Carbajal said, why don't you have a march? And then from there, it just kind of spiraled it in two months. Here we were, marching up State Street, making a statement about the issue of foster care, because what people don't know in Santa Barbara County is there are over 700 kids in care. They're often unseen because of confidentiality laws, but there are forgotten children, and that was the purpose of the march. It's, it's a very difficult organization for people to understand because we operate under dependency law, which is confidential. And so you, you don't have an open courtroom where you can see where everything's going on, and it's for their protection because they've already been hurt enough. So it's a really hard concept to sell to people, and that's why we did the march. We wanted to say, hey, look at all these kids. There are 700 in Santa Barbara. You won't be able to see them, but by seeing all the kids in the courthouse, that was representative of our kids and our community. CASA is very unique in that it is the only nonprofit that operates within the court system. Um, but we are private. We're not a county agency, although we work directly with the county and help social services do their work. When you're a foster child um, and you turn 18, you're technically called, you're emancipated and you're out on your own. So support services stop at 18 for kids in foster care. Um, many of these children wind up homeless, incarcerated, or in the welfare system, or having families of their own prematurely. When a child is assigned at CASA, they're more likely to graduate high school, go on to higher education, um, find a, a, a vocation or a job, and less likely to end up homeless. Um, so for that, we think, you know, helping each child, each unique child, in, in whatever way that calls to them, that makes a huge difference for them. Having somebody that just cares for them, that's there no matter what. We had a young man that really wanted to get out on the football team, but he was failing in school. And as it turned out, he had gotten all the way to his sophomore year of high school and had never had an eye exam. It turned out he could not see clearly to read, so he was failing in school. So we got him tested. We got him special glasses. Our CASA taught him how to read. He made the football team. And then with our children's special needs fund, we bought him the uniform. I mean, that is an illustration of how a child can slip through this bureaucracy and not get their needs taken care of. And if it weren't for that CASA, that child wouldn't have his dream. And his dream was to be on the football team. It's a normal kid thing, and our CASAs make that possible. What I found is, is this community likes to teach volunteerism and the younger kids, and they also want to illustrate to them that there are other kids out there that may not have it a great a home as these kids do, and I, I think it, it was a great educational opportunity and a great learning experience for those parents to explain to their kids, hey, there are other kids, you may go to school with them. There may be other kids you know. 
they're normal kids, but their circumstances aren't so great. And for that, for that, I know that um, we have one little kid that recently was counting his Halloween candy out, and he goes, "Oh, those are for Casa kids, and that's for me. Those are for Casa kids, and those are for me." But he's starting to think, and I think that's a really beautiful statement. So um, we don't know how the economy is going to affect us or where it's going to go yet. It's a little too early to tell. Um, but I anticipate with people losing their jobs, with the foreclosures on homes, that foster care and the dependency system is going to become even more of a necessity for the community and so is CASA. So any help we can get, we great, greatly appreciate. We did a really good job of illustrating um, with the six different cutouts the, f the figures of kids. Those are actual real kids, by the way, in Seattle. Um, we did a really great job of representing um, the kids that find themselves a part of foster care. They're just normal kids. They're great kids. It's just luck of the draw and they found themselves in a horrible circumstance. And, um, and, and that's really what we wanted people to know too, is that foster kids are great kids. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just kids, but they need our help.